Howdy once again, it's Tubal Kane. And in a recent video, I talked about a new Harbor Freight compressor that I uh, bought. And I'm replacing the old Craftsman. And now that I'm scrapping this, I took the compressor off and I decided to do an autopsy. So the title of this video is An Autopsy of the Rusted Out Craftsman Sears Air Tank. It's going to be quite a job to do this because I do not have a plasma cutter, but I'm going to flip this over and saw the bottom out with my sawzall and uh, see if we can see just what caused uh, the tank to leak. Well, we know it's rust, or I know it's rust, but uh, this is a 40-year-old tank. It was bought in uh, 20, uh, 1975. Not by me, but I have owned it for about 10 years, and, and I'm on my way to the recycler with it, but let's have a look inside. Now the whole idea here is I fillet this thing open. We got her turned upside down like a dead hog and I'm going to drill a big hole here, 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 and here and then saw between them with uh, my uh, reciprocating saw. So I'm going to use this Black & Decker $5 drill, heavy duty. This is back when Black & Decker was still a major player and a major name and uh, made some real good tools and I'm going to use this big uh, Greenly Unibit, I hope, to make a hole big enough to get the saw blade in. Then I will use the Sears Craftsman uh, reciprocating saw blade and this is a bimetal, professional you know, and it uh, outlasts carbon blade six to one. We'll see about that and it's a, it's a fine tooth what is that? It must be about 24 teeth. Yeah, 24 teeth is what it is. And I'll use this uh, $5 Black & Decker reciprocating saw, which I may refer to as a Sawzall, but of course it, that's a trade name. If I had a plasma cutter, I'd be done already. I wish I had pumped this up. I do a lot of wishing to determine where the hole was, but I believe it's right down here, and in, in, in cutting this out, I'm probably going to miss that. I didn't want to cut on the weld, but I've got uh, four holes drilled. There's no need to cut the whole bottom out. I probably should just cut a smaller piece here as a representative sample, but I'm going to cut this all out here as soon as I enlarge these four holes just a little bit so that the blade will get started. I hate to ruin an $8 blade on something foolish like this, but you know what happens to these blades, and I will wear a big face shield. They kind of scare me. You know what, I'm serious when I say I did not know I had this many heavy-duty Black & Decker tools, but this one, uh, I drilled the half-inch holes with it. It runs way too fast for that Christmas tree step bit, so I'm going to use this, uh, this beauty. And I already drilled one of the holes. And it went right through. I mean fast. Watch how nice these bits cut. That's all I need to get that saw blade started. Now watch this bimetal blade cut. Best 75 cents I ever spent. And you know, that was darn near as fast as uh, a plasma cutter. Well, not as fast, but uh, that really went fast. This whole blame thing hasn't been uh, 15 minutes, and that's getting the tools out and ready and, and uh, all of that. So, all right, we'll take a look inside, and I can see that straight in there, I got to get some more light. 
I can still see shiny, bright, unrusted metal on the sides, of course. All corrosion will be on the bottom. Now what you see there in the way of, uh, of rust is all the matter that fell down from uh, the vibration on that and from turning it upside down. But that is bright cold roll steel there. Almost as good as the day it was uh, made or rolled. But uh, of course look at the corrosion here on the bottom. So let's, uh, I'm going to scrape some of that off so we get just a little better look but you can see that this is really um, built up here with crud that probably wouldn't have even come out if you tried to drain it so I'm going to scrape that a bit I dumped out all the debris onto the floor and there it is and uh, with a little horseshoe magnet here you can see that that there's a uh, plenty of metal particles in there as well as all the other rust and, and crud. Now several people always uh, already said why don't you just get a new tank it's a 12 gallon tank well you look up the price but I bet it's well over a hundred dollars for a tank and then there would be all the welding and everything else involved and you know what I'm just too old to tackle those projects when I can get uh, a Harbor Freight one ready to run so that's why I did that. And this is, again, this is 40 years old. I just measured the thickness of this, and it is 104 thousandths with a micrometer. I don't know what the, uh, what gauge that is offhand. Somebody can look it up. I don't have my gauge out here in the garage. So you can see that even if you regularly drain the tank, you still got this sediment that will hold the moisture. Now, I suspect this area right here as the general area. So I'm going to uh, brush this off on the wire wheel and, and let's see what that looks like right in that area. I doubt that I'll find the actual hole because it's just going to be a pinhole. The leak in this was uh, large enough so you could hear it barely, even with my bad hearing, and it would drain the tank in, uh, let's say, uh, 10 minutes or less. Okay, I cleaned this up with a wire brush, and I think this is interesting here. You can see uh, how it's uh, carved out here, almost the way a river would carve out uh, uh, the mountain, although the water wasn't moving. I'm not comparing it to that, but look at how it has thinned out here compared to the original thickness. Although you can't tell from the end view, but I, I'm going to cut a piece of this out and uh, we'll see how much thinner it is right here. Again, I believe the actual hole is uh, near the, or probably on the weld, but I didn't cut that part out. I didn't want to ruin the blade if there was hard spots. And it didn't hurt that blade or knock any teeth out of the blade, so that was kind of amazing. Because it's always troublesome, as you know, cutting sheet metal with a saw blade, even with a thin one. They tend to grab and, and uh, break, but that bimetal blade was not to be belittled in any way. Hope you're enjoying this autopsy. Let me cut this part out, but I think I'll do that downstairs on my vertical bandsaw. You know what, that only took about seven minutes all together and that's running down the basement and as, as I was sawing through this I was just amazed at how easy it was to do compared to the cut that I made across here because it was so thinned out here it was almost like I was cutting uh, oh perhaps um, 26 gauge right in here and here's a sample of that if you can see I'm in daylight now so I hope you can see that look at how thin it is in the one spot compared to the original thickness we got a bit of a burr here too and even oh gee how easily that broke off because there's almost nothing there and then on this sample here 
I cut that piece off and then I, I ground it on the, the belt sander. And look at the thinness right there. So you can see how futile the effort would have been if I tried to patch the bottom. And you couldn't have even welded in this area. The patch would have had to, been, had to cover the entire bottom of the tank and that would have been, a, again, a waste. And there's, there's that. I found that quite interesting. All right, to the recyclers I go with this thing, and it will be reincarnated into a Harbor Freight compressor here, or tank, within uh, a few uh, mo short months, and then return to the Harbor Freight stores. So I hope you enjoyed this autopsy, uh, because I kind of enjoyed doing it, and this whole thing only took about a half hour, but it's going to take me about 15 minutes to clean up here. I got a mess, and look at the amount of... Uh, stuff that I swept up already but that aside hope you enjoyed the video I'll see you in my next video this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now